our ancestors probably ate a lot more magnesium than we do today, primarily due to the fact that, you know, soil quality is better and they obviously ate a lot less processed foods. So you probably didn't have as many issues as patients have today. Magnesium is a very important electrolyte that's involved in hundreds of processes like energy production, protein synthesis, muscle and nerve function, blood glucose control, even blood pressure. A magnesium deficiency can cause fatigue, muscle cramps, anxiety, and depression, most importantly, an irregular heartbeat. Why why do we have magnesium deficiencies? Standard American diet or the, the SAD. Yeah. That's the acronym we use. It only provides 50% of recommended daily analysis of magnesium. So diets that are high in refined sugars, like processed foods, high in saturated fats, if they drink frequently, if they drink a lot of coffee, even carbonated beverages, they tend to reduce magnesium absorption. If you're under a tremendous amount of stress, that can actually utilize magnesium up. And if you have like GI issues, like prolonged diarrhea, you can get decreased magnesium. The recommended daily allowance is 420 milligrams, but typically, I like to see patients take a bit more than that. So I like to see anywhere between 800 to 1000 milligrams. And I usually split it up into two doses. You want to use a particular form. Now there's lots of different esters of magnesium. This is something that's kind of confusing. There is aspartate, citric. I personally prefer the magnesium glycinate because it seems to be the most easily absorbed and it seems to go through the blood brain barrier and can be useful in terms of neurologic health. Oxide is the most common form of magnesium that you see in many supplements that are cheaper, the ones that you might find at like, you know, big box stores, right? I am not a big fan of it because the absorption is far worse than glycinate or citrate. You don't have to use supplements. Uh, you can get magnesium from a variety of sources. The biggest sources I see are in nuts, like pumpkin seeds and chia seeds, almonds, but also vegetables like spinach and avocado. So those would be things that I would consider and encourage people to look into. If you like what you heard and you're interested in potentially working with me or join the clinic, click on the link below to learn more about Suma Up and what the clinic and I can offer you. Mm -hmm.